the foreground. We'll be having lessons in the school hall next week, said Mrs. Petta. Why? shouted William, who was being naughty. Please put up your hand next time you'd like to ask a question, William, said Mrs. Petta. Then she pointed to the ceiling. Look, she said. The children looked up and saw a damp patch near the light. The roof of this classroom has been leaking for a long time, said Mrs. Petta. The workmen will come and repair it this weekend. Then they'll renovate the classroom next week. The walls will be repainted and some of the old cupboards will be replaced. The children were excited. They whispered among themselves. William was pleased too. He didn't like school very much and he thought having lessons in the school hall would make a change. If the weather is good, maybe we could ask Mrs. Petal to have lessons in the playground, he said to Harry. I hope we want to get so much work to do, Harry said. The class had been working on a history project. Mrs. Petter was showing the children some pictures and all the photographs. We can see how things have changed, said Mrs. Petter. Look at these clothes that people used to wear. Nobody would wear a hat like this no nowadays. She pointed to a man in an extravagant habit. Extravagant hat. There were feathers and stripes of a cloth or orange. The children were told to draw pictures and write about the people in the past. William didn't like the task at all. It's silly to study people and things that don't even exist anymore. He thought he took out his notebook and began to draw a dinosaur instead. He was quite pleased with his work. However, William soon got bored again. He learned over he leaned over to talk with Harry. Where do dinosaurs go shopping? He whispered. Oh, I don't know, said Harry. He was drawing a picture of the man in the extravagant hat. At the dinosaur, the boys burst out laughing. Their, their letter coat Mrs. Patrick's attention. Boys, what are you doing? She asked. Let me see your work. Harry showed Mrs. Petter his drawing. Then he looked at William's notebook. You're in trouble, he said. Mrs. Petter is going to go mad when she sees that dinosaur. Harry was all right. Mrs. Petter asked William to stay behind after school. I wish you'd try harder, William, sighed the Mrs. Petter. You're a clever boy. You can do good work if you try. You don't want people to think you're lazy, do you? William stayed silent. He knew Mrs. Petta was right. Mrs. Petta wrote a note to William's mom. The note said he had misbehaved in class and would have to do extra work for his history project at home. William didn't want to give his mom, t mom the note. He knew she would be cross. She was, Mrs. Petter is right, said mom. You should work harder. This story project sounds interesting. It's fun to find out about the past. Aren't you curious about how people lived? I liked the history when I was in school. When you were there in those days, it was a history, murmured William. William's mom was not amused. You should, you should be in school in the old days, she said. Teachers made us work hard. There weren't nice teachers like Mrs. Petal. 
children were punished with a cane. Did you get spanked when you were a young man? Sniggered William. William had a sister called Julie. She was five years older than him, and she was a star student. She always worked hard at school. She's always reading books, thought William, even when she doesn't have to. William liked her anyhow. He would ask her to help him with, with his homework sometimes. I have to do a history project this weekend, he said to her. Will you help me? You'll have to wait, said Julie. I'm busy right now. I need to hand it in on Monday, said William. Don't worry, we've got enough time, she said. She's off to read another book, though to the William. On Friday afternoon, Mrs. Petal asked the class to move all their things to the school hall. She asked William to help her empty the old coppers. He found some old cardboard boxes in one of them. What a load of rubbish, he thought. He pulled the boxes out of the cupboard. What do we have here? asked Mrs. Petter. Inside the boxes were some dusty old school books and some of the photographs of the school. Just leave them here, William. I'll sort them out at the weekend, said Mrs. Petter. There may be something very interesting. I doubt there is any, thought to William. He put the boxes aside. William was watching cartoons on Saturday afternoon. Julie came into the living room and turned off the television. Hey, I was watching that, said William. If you want me to help you with your project, we'll have to do it now, said Julie. William followed Julie into a room reluctantly. Reluctantly. You should come with me to the library this morning, she said. I found a book about our city. There are some very old photographs of your school in it. Julie opened the book and showed William some black and white photographs. He could recognize them. This one is my school, but it's not like that one. And now, said William, these iron railings are gone, and so have these tall chimneys. And here's my classroom, exclaimed William. But look at those old desks and that tiny blackboard. We have a computers and a television now. He took the book to his bedroom and began to read about the history of his school. Reading the book was a hard work, but William began to find it very interesting. What was it like in the old days? He wondered. He turned the page and found a photograph of a teacher with his students. That teacher looks rather fierce, and I don't like the look of his cane, he thought. William Cobbs, stop daydreaming said an angry voice behind him. The angry voice made William jump. <gasps> What's happening? He gasped. Where am I? He looked around him. He could hardly believe his eyes. He found himself sitting at an old desk in an old class, holding an old ink pen. He was wearing old-fashioned clothes, and so were the other children around him. He didn't know any of them any of them. This isn't a place I know, he thought. The teacher was wearing strange clothes too. He looked fierce and he was holding a cane. He looked like the teacher from the old photograph. He was pointing at the blackboard with his cane. Copy this sentence into your copy books, he said, and don't make any blots. 
William had no idea what he had to do, but he was too scared to ask. He watches the other children dip their pens into the ink wells and start to write. I guess I just try to do what they are doing, he thought. There was not a sound in the classroom except the scratching of the pens. William did his best to write with his ink pen. But it wasn't easy. He made a lot of ink blots. Why don't these people use regular pens, he thought. Time's up. Stop writing, snapped the teacher. Put down your pens and line up. Heartily. I'll look at your work later. Their beers truck of the came for its blood. The children got the children got up and lined up at the door. Will they all follow the quietly behind them? Follow me to the playground, said the teacher. William was still too scared to say, say anything. He went to the playground with the other children. The fierce teacher made them stand in lines. Then a man arrived and started to set up a strange box on legs. That must be a robot, thought to the William. William looked around him. The other children were interested in the strange box too, but no one made a sound. This is Mr. Day, said the teacher. He's going to take a photograph of us, so you must all stay very still. How can I keep my eyes open without blinking, he thought. William closed his eyes and stood very still. He thought about the blots he had made and about the cane the teacher was carrying. He gurped at the thought of it. Wake up, William, said Julie's voice. Would you stop daydreaming? William woke up to see himself in his room. It wasn't a dream. It was a nightmare, he said. I was back at my school a long time ago. That gives me an idea, said Julie. Why not write about your school in the old days? So William did. On Monday morning, William showed his work to Mrs. Patel. She was very pleased, pleased with it. I know you can do good work, she said. She showed William an old photograph. I found this in one of the cardboard boxes. It was taken more than 50 years ago, she said. That's me, exclaimed William, pointing at one of the children, the one with his eyes closed. That's strange, said Mrs. Patel. It doesn't look like you, William. The end.